video lecture is meant to cover the information found in Unit 10, Objective 6, which says to predict the products of double replacement reactions using solubility guidelines and correctly write the corresponding balanced chemical equations. This is post-unit. This information is not included in the unit test, but there will be a quiz on just this information. This video lecture also corresponds to Chapter 11, Section 3. There's a chart that you will learn to become comfortable with called Solubility Guidelines for Aqueous Solutions. Aqueous solutions are those solutions where you have a substance dissolved in water. And basically, if you have uh, an ion in a compound, I'm looking at this part of the chart, if you have an ion in any one of these situations, that compound will be soluble and therefore it will be aqueous, it will be dissolved in water. So if you have a compound, looking at the chemical formula, and it's got any of the group 1 ions right here, lithium, sodium, potassium, etc., then that substance will be soluble. If you have a compound with ammonium in it, any compound with ammonium will be soluble. Any compound with nitrate is soluble. Any compound with an acetate is soluble. Any compound with a hydrogen carbonate, a chlorate, a perchlorate, any with the halides or the sulfates are soluble compounds, and we would say that these are aqueous. However, there are some exceptions, and that's what this column is about right here. If you have a compound with a halide, a chloride, a bromide, and iodide, they're soluble except when the cation is either silver, lead, or dimercury. So silver chloride, silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide, would be insoluble. And that's what you would describe it. So these are insoluble. And if they are insoluble, the symbol you would use in the chemical equation is S, or solid. All sulfates are soluble, except when you have silver sulfate, calcium sulfate, strontium sulfate, barium sulfate, and lead two sulfate. So those substances, if you have those compounds, then you would say it's insoluble, and it would be written in the chemical equation as a solid. Now on the other half of this chart, there are certain ions that are insoluble. No matter what they are with, they are insoluble. And so you can see here the carbonates, the chromates, phosphates, sulfide, and hydroxide. They tend to be insoluble. And if they're insoluble, you would write them, of course, uh, just as we did on the other chart, as an S for solid. But there's a lot more exceptions here, so you have to be careful in watching your compounds. So for example, a carbonate is usually insoluble, but if that a carbonate is with any of the group one ions, potassium, sodium, lithium, those, or ammonium, then that compound is said to be soluble. And if it's soluble, we would use the symbol AQ for aqueous. So you just have to pay attention. I'm going to take you down here to the hydroxides. Hydroxides tend to be insoluble, but when they are, well, when you have a group one ion with a uh, hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, or calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, etc., then those substances are soluble, and again, we write that as an AQ. So it's a pretty simple uh, chart to follow. You will be given this chart um, in class and on tests. It's not something you have to memorize. So let's use this chart to determine if these substances are soluble or insoluble. So for example, NH4NO3, this substance is called ammonium nitrate. Okay. So ammonium, anything with ammonium is soluble, no exceptions. So therefore, we don't even have to look at the nitrate to see to see the rule. So this is soluble, and so I'm going to write soluble. And I'm going to move the chart a little bit, so this is soluble. AGBR, AGBR, there's no rule for silver, but there is a rule for the halides, including bromide. So halides are soluble, however, they are insoluble if the bromide is with silver, lead to, or dimercury. So here we have silver bromide. That makes this substance insoluble. And so here we have an example of each. Number one we would say is aqueous. Number two we would say is S for solid. 
Number three, NaHCO3. NaHCO3, this is sodium bicarbonate. So sodium is a group one ion right here. If, you, if there's a sodium ion, it is a soluble, no exceptions. So this is soluble, and we would say that this is aqueous. Silver chloride, AgCl. Chloride is one of the halides down here in the chart right here. It is soluble except when it's with silver, lead, or mercury. So here we have a situation here where the halide is with silver, making this insoluble. So this is very much like number two. And we would say S for solid. Calcium hydroxide. Okay, hydroxide. We have a rule for hydroxide. So right here on this side of the chart. So hydroxides tend to be insoluble except when the hydroxide is with calcium. So calcium hydroxide is soluble, and we would say it is AQ. Next one, calcium carbonate. Okay, there's not a specific rule for calcium, but there is a carbonate rule over here on this side of the chart. So carbonates are insoluble, except when they are with um, when they are with, I have to move the because I can't read it. Carbonates are insoluble except when they are combined with group one ions or ammonium. So let's take a look here. This is not a group one ion and this is not ammonium. So therefore this is insoluble. It won't dissolve in water. So it's going to stay a solid when you put it in water. Aluminum sulfate, we have a rule for sulfates right down here. Sulfates are soluble except when there was silver, calcium, strontium, barium, and lead. That is not the case here, so we would say aluminum sulfate is soluble. If I could spell soluble, and we would then say soluble is aqueous. Calcium sulfate, okay, here we have a sulfate saying it's soluble. The rule says sulfates are soluble, except one of the exceptions is with calcium, so we would say calcium sulfate is insoluble, and it would be a solid. Sodium sulfide, okay, we have a rule for sodium. It's a group one ion, it is soluble no matter what. Um, or we could, we have a rule for sulfide over here. Sulfides are insoluble except when they're combined with group one ions. So by both rules, this is a soluble substance making it aqueous. And number 10, Mg3PO42, this is magnesium phosphate. We have a rule for phosphates right here. Phosphates are insoluble except when they are with a group one ion or ammonium. And so that is not the case here, so magnesium phosphate is insoluble, making this S. Okay, I'm going to ask you to pause the video for you to try numbers 11 through 20. And when you unpause the video, the answers will be on the screen. All right, so in examples 11 through 20, you can see that there were only two compounds that turned out to be insoluble, numbers 11 and 15 strontium sulfate and iron uh, three hydroxide. And so those are the only two that you would write as solids. Everything else is soluble and you, you, would, it, uh, you would write an aqueous symbol after that chemical compound in the chemical equation. Moving on to part two of this lecture. In this part, we will be predicting products of double replacement reactions from chemical names. Oh, looks like we have a little formatting issue going on there. So from chemical names, we are going to, of uh, the reactants, we are going to predict the chemical names of the products of a double replacement, uh, re um, double replacement reaction. So this is essentially, if you recall, the double replacement is A plus AB plus CD. Remember we said these are uh, ionic compounds, so always the cation first. So there's a double switch here. You'll have A, D uh, coming together. A and D, positive ones written first. And then C, B. It's always going to be C before B because C is the positive one and B is the negative one. So we're looking for the switch. So all we're really doing is swapping out the names. Aluminum iodide and lead to nitrate. So here, we're going to start with the cation from the first compound and we're going to put it with the anion from the second compound. So we have aluminum nitrate as one of our substances. And the other one is lead 2. So we're taking the cation from 
from the second compound and putting it with the anion from the first. So lead to iodide. So we're just doing a name switch, but we are maintaining the cation first in both new compounds. Now what you will do is you will look up aluminum nitrate in the solubility chart and that will show you to determine whether or not these substances uh, will be soluble or insoluble. Right? We are going to start with the assumption that all of these are aqueous to start, which are starting with two solutions that are aqueous. We want to find out what will happen to the products. Will they remain dissolved in water or will they precipitate out? So aluminum nitrate. Nitrates are soluble, no exceptions. So that means aluminum nitrate will have the AQ symbol. Now the lead to iodide. You'll find the iodide under the halide rule on the soluble compound list. But there's an exception when the halides or the iodides are with silver, lead to, or dimercury, then it is insoluble. So in this case, because of the lead to, this lead to iodide is insoluble, and I would write it as S for solid. So here is an example of a reaction where you'd have a double replacement where one of the products precipitates out. So that's what we are seeing here. This is a precipitate. Silver nitrate and potassium phosphate. Both of these are aqueous to begin with. We're going to have silver and phosphate as our one of our new combinations. Silver, phosphate, plus potassium nitrate. We would not write this as nitrate potassium. So it's a cation first. So the name is written first. On the left side of the equation, it has to be written first on the right side of the equation. All right, we're looking up our solubility rule, silver phosphate. There is a rule for phosphates. It's on the chart on the right-hand side. Phosphate is insoluble. The exception is when the phosphate is with a group one ion or ammonium. Well, that is not the case in this situation. So it is insoluble, we would write it as an S or solid. Potassium nitrate, all nitrates are soluble, no exceptions. All potassiums, because it's a group one ion, all group one ions are soluble. So by either the cation or the anion, we have a dissolved substance here. It is soluble, so that will be a so we will have a reaction here. You would see a precipitate from this combination of chemicals there when you combine silver nitrate with potassium phosphate. The third example. The third example, we have copper 2 bromide and aluminum chloride. Okay, these are both soluble to begin with. The new combinations would be copper 2 chloride plus aluminum bromide. So if we were to look up the rule for chlorides, chloride is a halide, so it's in the soluble compound list. There are some exceptions. If the chloride is combined with silver, lead, or dimercury, it would be insoluble, but copper is none of those. So chloride, this copper two chloride is soluble, and we would say it is AQ. Aluminum bromide. Bromide is again another halide, which is, should be soluble. The exceptions are silver, lead, and mercury, and this is none of those. So this is also soluble and also aqueous. So when your two products are both aqueous, then there's no precipitate. And if there's no precipitate, we say that there's no reaction that happens. So we're going to put an X through the arrow indicating that no reaction, NR, takes place. All right, take a moment to pause this video for you to try the fourth and the fifth example on this page. When you come back, the answers will be on the screen. So here are the answers for the last two examples. They both will uh, react. You will see a precipitate in both of those reactions, barium sulfate in the fourth example and cobalt to carbonate in the fifth example. We're going to move to part three where we're going
going to essentially be doing the same process, but instead of chemical names, we're actually going to be taking a look at doing the same thing, but with writing chemical formulas and also writing the um, balanced equation. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to predict the products of the following reactions by writing their correct chemical formulas after the arrow, so formulas instead of names this time. We are going to balance the equations using coefficients. And then we're going to use the chart, the solubility guidelines, to indicate which of the products will be a precipitate and which will be aqueous by using the symbols S and AQ. If both products are soluble, then indicate that no reaction will take place by placing an X over the arrow. It's so the same overall process, but now we're going to show more of the chemical formulas. So let's take a look. And this is going to require a bit more involvement with the, um, the formula writing. So what we have to do here, this sodium is going to then combine with this bromine. But in order to do that, you need to know what the charges are going to be. So either you uncrisscross the formulas or you refer to your blue ion sheet. Here's the thing that confuses many students. Just because there's a two subscript after the bromine right here does not mean that you're going to automatically bring that, that subscript over. So what you will do is you will put one sodium next to one bromine. And you know that sodium is a plus one and bromide is a minus one. So this formula should just be NaBr, and technically we shouldn't have we shouldn't have any charges written up there um, to write the correct formula. So NaBr, notice I took the cation from the first compound and the anion from the second compound. Now the second product, I will start with the cation from the second compound, so Ca, which we know is a plus 2, and the anion from the second compound, which I know is an OH, so I'm going to just do this right here as the side problem. Calcium plus 2, OH minus 1, so when we crisscross, we now have to rewrite that as Ca, parentheses, OH, subscript 2. So now we have the correct formulas. Balancing this equation, we would have Na, um, Na has one on each side. Calcium, we have one on each side. Here, I have two oxygens and two hydrogens on the product side right here. But I have only one oxygen and one hydrogen over here. So I'm going to have to put a two in front of that NaOH. But of course, that now tells me I have two sodiums on the left. So I'm going to have to put a 2 in front of the NaBr to give me two sodiums, which will give me two bromines. But I already had two bromines on the left side, and so now that makes everything balanced. So 2-1, two, 2-1 one, two, one is the final balancing. All right, now we need to look up the solubility chart and determine is NaBr soluble or not. Well, all group 1 ions are soluble, no exceptions, and so sodium falls into that category. So NaBr is soluble, and so therefore we're going to put it as an AQ. Okay. Calcium hydroxide, by the hydroxide rule, hydroxides are insoluble except when they are with a group 1 ion, calcium, barium, strontium, or ammonium, but the, which calcium falls into that, making this substance aqueous, making it soluble. So when both products are soluble, no reaction appears to occur, uh, no precipitate form, so we would put an X through that. All right, let's do another one together. Silver, nitrate, and iron, chromate. Okay. So here's what we're going to do, and we don't know, you're not familiar with the chromate ion, we haven't worked with it really at all. So chromate. Well, let's start from the beginning. Silver is going to go with chromate. You know from your blue ion chart that silver is a plus one. Chromate is a minus two ion. So when we were to put those together, our compound there would be Ag2CrO4. Our other combination is iron will go together with nitrate. 
we know the nitrate is a minus one, and if we had uncrisscrossed before, uh, knowing that chromate's a minus two, that iron had to be a plus two. So this is FeNO3 parentheses two. All right, balancing this equation. Starting at the beginning, I see one silver on the left side. I see two silvers on the right side, so we have to put a two in front of the AgNO3. That's going to give me two of these nitrate groups right here, but I have two nitrate groups on the right side, so that works. And then there's one iron and one chromate ion, so this actually is a pretty simple one to balance. It's two, one, one, one. Looking up the solubilities, silver, chromate. The solubility chart shows me uh, chromate to be on the insoluble side. So there's a rule that chromates are insoluble, except when they are with group one ions, calcium, magnesium, or ammonium. Well, that is not the case. So this substance, um, uh, silver chromate, is insoluble. And so therefore, this will be the precipitate. Iron nitrate has a rule. All nitrates are soluble. There are no exceptions. So anytime you see a nitrate, you automatically know it's going to be aqueous. Okay. All right, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try to figure out the compounds on the product side of this third example. When you come back, the products will be written. When you put together the silver and the sulfide, silver is a plus one, sulfide is a minus two, so the formula becomes Ag2S. And the potassium and the nitrate coming together is KNO3. So you can see here that we did not automatically bring over the subscripts. The two next to the potassium did not transfer over. Okay, so this is why we need to balance the equation. Silver on the left. Well, Harry, we're going to, I'm going to ask you to pause the video. You try to balance it. When you're ready to have an answer check, uh, play, play the video again and the equation will be balanced for you. Correctly balanced, this equation is 2, 1, 1, 2. All right, now take a moment to check the solubilities of the products. And again, in all these examples, I think I failed to mention that we're, I mean, you're going to assume that your reactants are all going to be aqueous. And so we should have gone back and put aqueous symbols next to everything to, to begin with. Take a moment to pause the video Check your solubilities for your silver sulfide and your potassium nitrates and come back for an answer check. All right, you can see here that there is a precipitate and silver sulfide is the solid in this reaction. So a reaction does indeed happen. All right, example number four, we've got ammonium phosphate and lithium hydroxide. Take a moment to make your new combinations of your products. Put together the ammonium with the hydroxide first and then put together the lithium together with the phosphate. See if you can come up with those chemical formulas first. Then, uh, so take a moment, pause the video, come back, and we'll do an answer check on the chemical formula. All right, so you can see here that the uh, combination of ammonium with hydroxide gives you NH4OH, and the combination of a lithium ion with a phosphate ion, you get Li3PO4. Now, we can see here that we are going to need to balance the equation. There are three ammoniums on the left side, so we're going to need to have three ammoniums on the right side. When we put a three in front of the ammonium hydroxide, that also gives us three hydroxides on the product side. So I'm going to have to make sure I have three hydroxides on the reactant side. So I'm going to put a three in front of the LiOH. Three lithiums on the reactant side matches up with three lithiums on the product side. And there's one phosphate ion on both sides. So there you have the balanced equation, one, three, three, one. All right, checking our solubilities. Anything with an ammonium is soluble. According to the ammonium rule, ammoniums are always soluble, no exceptions. So therefore, that is an aqueous substance. And lithium phosphate, phosphate is um, the compound or an ion found on the insoluble side. So phosphates are insoluble except when they are with group one ions or ammonium. Well, since lithium is a group one ion, this is an exception. So therefore lithium phosphate is aqueous. And since both of these substances are aqueous, this is actually, there's no precipitate and therefore no reaction. All right, take a moment to predict your products for this final example, CaCl2. 
with sodium carbonate to put together a calcium ion with a carbonate ion and put together a sodium ion with a chloride ion. Pause the video now. You should have found the compounds CaCO3, calcium carbonate, and NaCl, sodium chloride. These are the correct formulas. If you did not get these formulas, pause the video and see if you can figure out why, why these are the correct formulas. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to balance the equation. This equation does need to be balanced. Pause the video now to balance the equation. This equation is now balanced. One, 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 two are our final coefficients. Last thing to do is to determine the solubilities for our products. Take a moment to pause the video now. So you can see here that this reaction will indeed take place. There will be a precipitate that forms. The precipitate is calcium carbonate, while sodium chloride remains dissolved in the water. This concludes the video lecture on double replacement reactions. See you in the classroom.